Hey everyone, Ricky Rathor here again, broker owner at Remax Metropolis, real estate lawyer with Big Professional Corporation. This week, we're bringing you the last week quarterly. The previous updates that we've been providing you on a week over week basis since we went under the state of emergency has been week over week on a monthly basis. But because we've got the statistical data points at this time, we're going to be putting out the numbers on a weekly basis, but reviewing the last quarter to give us more of a visual as to what's going on in the marketplace at this time in the greater Toronto area. So jumping right into it, Looking at the total number of new listings, you can see here that right before we went under the state of emergency in our lockdown, we were on route to a record month and in fact, a record year. As soon as the city and province went under lockdown, we saw a steep decline in the number of listings. Now you can see here that those listings bottomed out at um, the end of April, towards the beginning of May, we started seeing an uptick. And at this point, we're starting to see a rebound in the number of listings that are being put on the marketplace. Now, what does this mean? It's likely that because we're seeing better weather and an increase in consumer confidence with businesses opening up, sellers are now more comfortable listing their homes. And since we've gone into the state of emergency, we've seen many agents at the forefront of using uh, online technologies to be able to show properties virtually, uh, having PPE kits uh, created and these sorts of measures which really spurred consumer confidence and assisted those people that needed to be in the market uh, to deal with the real estate transaction very safely and effectively. So at this time, in the beginning of June, we see a huge um, uh, surge in consumer confidence, and we're starting to see that the listings are up again. Now, compared year over year, we're still not where we should be, but this is still very promising when you look at these numbers at this time. The next metric we have here is the average list price. Now, when you look at the average list price, before the state of emergency, we are at 1.1 million, and in fact, now, first week of June, we're actually higher than we were before we went into the state of emergency and the lockdown. So this is a very interesting metric. Again, it's likely because consumers are confident. Sellers are very confident right now with what's happening in the marketplace. And this is a very promising statistic. The next metric we look at is, is, is the actual average sale price. Now, the average sale price has come down uh, uh, slightly over the last quarter. However, when you look at it, a lot of the media outlets are reporting that we're seeing sharp declines in the real estate market. Now, that, in fact, isn't true. What we're talking about since we've gone into the state of emergency is both number of listings as well as the demand come down. So both supply and demand have come down proportionately. When this happens, what you see is that prices remain relatively stable. And we can see that here when we look at these stats. And it's quite clear that prices haven't gone down steeply. The number of transactions have come down, but prices remain relatively stable. Okay, so this is a very good indicator at this time. Now, the last thing we have is the average number of days on market. So the average number of days on market has been on the increase since we've gone under lockdown in the state of emergency. But that being said, it's still a very healthy and stable number in terms of the number of days on market. And at this time, we still see that the marketplace is a seller's marketplace. Now, this upcoming week, we'll be publishing the numbers for May. And at that point, we'll be able to compare uh, May of this year with May of last year to give us a better idea of what things are looking like. But overall, things are very positive and optimistic. Now, my last comment again on the state of affairs as far as the media outlets are concerned, be careful and mindful of what you're reading and what you're seeing out there. Look at the data points and the statistics. You can't, for example, compare Toronto as a market to Canada as a whole. Toronto is a very specific marketplace. Our micro markets within Toronto, our micro markets within the GTA, when compared with one another, are very different, in fact, as well. So you really have to look at the numbers in your specific market to see how your property uh, values are doing. So when people call me and say, well, how are, you know, how's the market doing? My response is depends on where you're located, depends on the type of property, and it depends on the overall statistics in that specific area. You shouldn't be comparing uh, small marketplaces to large places like the entire of Canada. It doesn't make any sense to look at things like that. When you look at things like that, it'll really throw the statistics and numbers out of whack. Look at the data points and make your decisions at that point. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.